So the next matrix we need to talk about is the projection matrix. So we previously talked about modeling matrices to move around your objects and view matrices to place the camera where we want it. The projection matrix tells us about the shape of the camera or the particular properties of the camera. So on this slide, we see a couple of examples. On the left-hand side, these are perspective, meaning that there's a point at the eye and the rays diverge from the eye and go out at a, in a fan angle from it. This is what we normally think about and what you're going to eventually set up in your OpenGL. It's the way our human eyes work. It's the way cameras work. On the right-hand side, we see a parallel projection. This means all the rays are parallel to each other. It's mathematically simpler, but it's not the way we're used to looking at the world. Nevertheless, we're going to look at this first because it's mathematically simpler. So on the left, we have an orthographic projection. What does this mean? It means that the rays are perpendicular to the projection plane. And in this case, we've written down a very simple uh, matrix to perform this orthographic projection. All it does is take our x, y, z of our world coordinate 3D object points and project them such that x, y equals x, y. This is what's been happening so far in your code. Uh, if you don't specify either an orthographic or projection matrix, then this is the default, essentially an identity matrix that passes things through. So we only see objects which are from negative one to one uh, on the x, y, and then we just compress out the z. It's also possible to have parallel rays which are not orthographic. So on the right-hand side here, we see the rays come in, but they're not perpendicular to the viewing plane. Uh, there's some specialized conditions in which you might want to do this. Uh, the matrix is going to look a little bit different, but I think the key point is they're just matrices, uh, and they produce something where we could work out the math of where do the points go um, in, into whatever is going to be our x, y point. So there's a command to do this. Uh, this is the old OpenGL command. Uh, so it's written this way. But your matrix library from our textbook that's doing WebGL has an ortho command, just like it has a translate and scale command, and it returns a matrix to you. Here it is. This is the matrix that gets returned to you. So what do you specify in this command? The left and right, the bottom and top, and the near and the far. Now, we haven't said a lot about near and far yet. Um, there'll be some pictures coming up, which will describe that when we talk about perspective. But our right and left right now is 1 and negative 1. So you see that we just get 2 divided by 2. This is 1. Similarly, these are all going to be 1. Um, and if our right and left are, are the same distance apart, then these things all turn into zeros. Uh, so now what are we left with? 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. Oh my gosh, this looks like an identity matrix. So if we don't, if we just specify what we've had so far, negative one to one is our viewing area. That's a identity orthographic matrix. If we start to change around where our left and right view planes are, then we can set up some other matrix which essentially moves around our objects to get different things into the view. Uh, 